Let us pray. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. Who never fails. Who never fails. Forevermore. Amen. Jesus never fails. Amen. Jesus never fails. Amen. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Forevermore. I have a God who answers prayers. I have a God who answers prayers. I have a God who answers prayers. Who answers prayers? Who answers prayers? Forevermore. Amen. Jesus answers prayers. Amen. Jesus answers prayers. Amen. Jesus answers prayers. Jesus answers prayers. Jesus answers prayers forevermore. Father Almighty, the unchangeable Lord, the same yesterday, the same today, the same forever, the same on the mountain, the same in the valley, we worship you. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Yeah. It's a joy to know that you are always around. That wherever we go, you are there with us. Just like our shadow, we cannot be separated from you. Because you are even dwelling in us, giving us the hope of glory. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Yeah. Today, my Father, my God, in the lives of every one of your children, please show up again. Amen. Do marvelous things in our lives Amen. and answer our prayers by fire. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, wave your hand to one or two people and say, Good day, God bless you mightily. And then we may please be seated. We we'll continue with our series, Going Higher, Part 72. And today we will be looking at 1 Kings chapter 21 from verse 16 to 24. 1 Kings chapter 21, from verse 16 to 24. Again, I will encourage you to read the whole chapter. It makes some very beautiful reading also. And it came to pass when he had heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down, to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. And 
Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and make and we make thy house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger, and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also speak the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dogs shall eat. And him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. Ah, this is um, a very sobering chapter in the Bible. And the reason we are reading it not only because Elijah was part of the story it's because there's a great lesson those of you who are going higher must learn when a man does not know how to say thank you to God there is no level of evil that he cannot descend to. In the previous chapter, we've just heard how God delivered the great army of the Syrians into the hand of the little army of Israel. This same God just showed this same king, Ahab, how mighty it can be on the mountain as well as in the valley. The next thing we heard was that the king, who never said thank you at any moment to God, was that he looked out of his palace and he saw a vineyard belonging to Naboth, very close to the palace. And then he sent to Naboth and said, I, I, will, I want your vineyard. I must have it at all cost. If you want to sell, I will buy. If not, I'll give you another one elsewhere. And Naboth said, Your Majesty, this is my inheritance. The vineyard had been in my, family, in my family for a long time. I cannot sell my birthright. Now you would have thought that the king, if you have all the money you want, go and plant your own. You want a bigger one than this one. You have the resources. Instead, he told the wife what is making him sad, and the wife said, leave it to me. You will get it for free. And so they arranged, or rather she arranged. And I pray for all of you men listening to me. If you have an evil woman as a wife, I pray that the Almighty God will convert her today. Amen. Anyway, so... Naboth died. And King Heber, uh, Jezebel told the wife, the vineyard is yours for free. And the king went down. Now, yes, I got it from him. He won't give, him, give me uh, freely. Now it's mine. He has forgotten that God is in the heavens and he sees everything that is going on. 
And so even as she was there rejoicing, ah, I got the vineyard at last. Elijah arrived with a message from the Lord. And the king looked up and saw Elijah and said, Ah, my enemy, you located me here. Elijah said, Yes, sir, I've located you. And this time, I have a message for you. By the time God finishes with you, there will be nothing left of you and of your heritage forever. This chapter in the Bible could take us several Sundays, but we will only select few points there. The first one we will want to make clear to those of you who are, who are really determined to go higher in the Lord is that you must never, never sell your birthright. Not for any price. And when we are talking about birthright here, we are not talking about houses left behind by your parents or land. We are talking about something much more serious. But you know very well the story in Genesis 25 from verse 29 to 34. Genesis 25 from verse 29 to 34. When Esau sold his birthright for a plate of food, the Bible tells us that the repercussion was grievous. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 to 17. Hebrews 12, verse 16 to 17. That when he wanted the birthright back, when, they, when he wanted the blessing that should have been his, he sought for it with great crying, but he couldn't get it back. If you're a child of God, you have a birthright that money could not buy. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. Romans 8 verse 17 says, if you are a child of God, you are a hearer of God. Joint hears with Christ. Don't sell your salvation. Salvation brings to you the entire wealth of the Most High God. Everything that God could give to his begotten son, Jesus Christ, is available to you too. You are joined here with Jesus Christ. Don't do anything at all that can cost you your salvation. Don't be involved in any transaction that can cost you your salvation. It doesn't matter how rosy the contract. It doesn't matter the gain that you could get from it. Don't sell your salvation. Matthew chapter 16 verse 26, Matthew 16 verse 26 says, What does it profit a man? If he wins the whole world and loses his soul, what are you going to give in exchange for your soul? Remember Judas Iscariot. Anytime you are tempted to compromise, in Matthew 27 from verse 3 to 5, Matthew 27, 3 to 5, the Bible told us that after he had collected 30 pieces of silver so that he could betray the Lord Jesus Christ, he later on repented. But it was too late. And never, he never spent the money. He hanged himself. It doesn't matter 
the wealth, the riches, the position, the influence that you might be offered if only you could just compromise a little. Don't agree. Imagine in the story of Gehazi, Second King chapter 5, from verse 20 to 27. 2 Kings 5, from verse 20 to 27. When he was dazzled, Gehazi was dazzled by the wealth of Naaman that he brought, that his master refused. Because what the master was interested in was in the salvation of the Samaritan, Naaman, not his wealth. But Gehazi compromised. He got money and got leprosy along with it. But imagine what Gehazi lost. It's not just his health. Imagine what that boy could have become if he had remained faithful to the end, to the cause of the king of kings. Imagine what could have happened in 2 Kings chapter 13 from verse 14 to 21. 2 Kings 13 from verse 14 to 21. If Elisha had said to Gehazi, I'm about to die, but I still have plenty of anointing left, even in my bones. What can I do for you before I be taken away from thee? Imagine Gehazi asking for a double portion of the spirit of Elisha. Imagine a man having a double portion of the anointing of a man whose bones, dead bones, can raise the dead. Imagine the kind of prophet Gehazi could have been. Instead, he ended up the patron saint of lepers. Don't sell your salvation. There's no price big enough that will be a compensation for your salvation. Man of God, woman of God, please take note of that. It's very, very crucial. Now let's move on to the fact that Naboth died. He refused to sell his birthright. As a result, he was killed. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11, First Corinthians 10 verse 11 says, everything that had happened before is to teach us a lesson. All the things we read about in the Bible, they are examples for those of us upon whom the end of the age has come. What lessons can we learn from Naboth? Probably the biggest lesson of all, there are many of them, probably the biggest lesson of all is that the triumph of the evil one is temporary. Oh yes, they killed him. But we are reading about him today. He refused to compromise and he paid a costly price. Some of you may pay a costly price for refusing to compromise. And I know what I'm talking about. I have examples. I have a, an example of someone who, because he refused when he was promoted to the position of accountant, a general of a very big organization, 
And they told him, all right, now you are here. This is the way we play the game here. Every month you will be going home with so many millions. And he said, ah, how will I be able to spend the money? If I buy a car with this kind of money, I'll, I'll be riding in a moving coffin. How will I be able to go to church on Sunday and say, Jesus is my provider? The reason he resigned, the reason he came to us is, please pray for me because I know they will come after me to prevent me from talking. Well, thank God that the Lord can still build a wall of fire around his own. But even if you have to pay the ultimate price, remember the triumph of evil is temporary. Yes, in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, Genesis 1 from verse 1 to 3, darkness came first. But finally when the light shone, darkness has to give way. In John chapter 1 verse 5, John chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says the light shines in darkness and darkness cannot overcome it. In Genesis 37 from verse 13 to 28, Genesis 37 from verse 13 to 28, when the brothers of Joseph saw him coming, they said, let's kill him. And let's see what will become of his dreams. Well, they didn't kill him, but they sold him into slavery. They thought we are rid of this dreamer. This boy who said he's going to rule over us, we are rid of him now, permanently. Dream killers may think they have won. A God is still on the throne. In Genesis chapter 50 from verse 15 to 21, Genesis 50 from verse 15 to 21, these same dream killers, she came and fell down before Joseph and said, we are your servants. But don't forget, Joseph was able to reach the top because he refused to compromise. Remember, in the same Genesis chapter 39, if you read it from read the old chapter, when he was doing fine, when he has become managing director, and the wife of the uh, CEO or whatever you want to call Potiphar said, compromise, lie with me. He refused. And why did he refuse? I can't do this and sin against God. I can't do this and sin against God. Child of God, I hope you are listening. Don't sell your salvation. Potiphar's wife may talk, may, might have thought she won. Because by the time she threw Joseph into, the, into prison, she, she thought that that boy would never get out of prison. And you know, each time I read Genesis chapter 41 from verse 1 to 44, Genesis 41, from verse 1 to 44, when Joseph finally landed on the throne, and Pharaoh said, every knee must bow to Joseph. Maybe it's my own imagination, but if I were Joseph, I believe the first place I will come to is the house of Potiphar. And I will say, I want to see Madame. 
so that she can bow. If you don't sell your salvation, all those who think they have triumphed over you will come bowing down to you. In Daniel chapter 6, from verse 1 to 17, Daniel 6 from verse 1 to 17, when all the enemies of Daniel got him thrown into the den of lions, and a big stone was rolled across the mouth of the den so that there would be no way he could escape. And they even got the king to seal the stone so he cannot be moved by anybody. They thought they had won. I am sure they must have had a party that night. This boy thought he was going to rule over us. Now let him rule among the lions. But you know the rest of the story. By the time we go to Genesis, uh, Daniel chapter 6 from verse 19 to 28, Daniel 6 from verse 19 to 28, uh, it was they who ended up feeding the lions, being fed to the lions. I'll give you one more example, and then we will pray. Because the, the one I believe God is talking to is hearing me loud and clear. In Genesis chapter 4, from verse 1 to 10, Genesis 4 from verse 1 to 10, Cain thought he has won when he killed Abel and hid his body. Thought nobody saw him. How can you, small boy, come and gain the favor of God when myself, your brother, um, rejected by him. But then God intervened. And when God pronounces judgment, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 11 to 15, Genesis 4 from verse 11 to 15, we see clearly from the mouth of Cain himself, that there is a punishment worse than death. Ah, he said my punishment is more than I could bear. If you think that the wicked man has won, maybe you should know what the wicked man is passing through. I will tell you a story. Years ago, I went to visit Kirikiri prison. And I met one of the prisoners there after administration. He said, pray for me. I've been on death row for 33 years. Pray that they will kill me so at least I can go. He said, every night, they kill people, people, the people that are going to be killed are killed usually in the night between 2 and 4 a.m. He said, every night for 33 years I've been waiting to hear the footsteps. To know, are they coming for me today? He said, I don't sleep until 4. After I've not had any footsteps by 4, I know they are not coming for me today. He said, I've been like that for 33 years. He said, even if they release me now, I, I won't even recognize anywhere. There's something worse than death. Don't sell your salvation. The triumph of the enemy is not going to last. Never you forget he who laughs last, laughs best. Before we pray, if you are not even saved yet, then you don't know what you are missing. Nothing as precious as salvation. But if you want to have a taste of the Lord to see how good he can be, 
you can bow your head now and call on him and ask him to please save your soul and I will pray with you and you will taste the Lord and see how good it can be so if you like to surrender your life to Jesus please bow your head wherever you are and call on him and say this thing called salvation give it to me today this thing that money can't buy make it available to me today and I will serve you for the rest of my life Call on him now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, Savior of mankind, I thank you on behalf of all of us who are already saved. And I'm thanking you on behalf of these people who have come asking for salvation today. Father, please receive them. Have mercy on them. Save their souls too. Let your blood wash away their sins. Amen. Let them begin to know the joy of salvation. Amen. And let them remain yours forever. Amen. And Father, I'm praying for all of us who are already your children. Whatever may be the temptation, please Lord, don't let us lose our salvation. Amen. Let us be yours forever. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I rejoice warmly with those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ. Please contact me and I promise you I'll be praying for you. And as soon as possible, contact any redeemed Christian church of God near you and tell the pastor I sent you and he will tell you what to do next. God bless you. Praise the Lord.